All right, good afternoon. It is about three days away from March. And look at this. This is after uh, Utah's, what do they call that? The snow apocalypse? Uh, Snowmageddon. Snow yeah, where Tooele got three feet of snow, just like 20 miles away from here. And then the mountains got two to three feet of snow. So we're on Antelope Island doing one of our favorite hikes called Frary Peak. We actually did this like a month ago. So we brought our snowshoes. So imagine higher up, it's gonna be like way steep snow. We're gonna be, you know, post hauling through a lot of it. Maybe it's booted down, I'm not sure, but we brought them just in case. And of course, as you can tell, there's Clark. And he loves this hike, he loves adventure. And he loves the snow. And this morning, we went uh, to the um, indoor fitness center down in, Bount in Bountiful and ran about a mile and a half. Kids did some swimming, so I'm already kind of tired from that. But uh, yeah, so far so good. All right, there's the winter trailhead down there and the summer trailheads just right in front of us. And there's about six inches of snow, at least here at the base, and Clark is loving this. He's running around so fast, just taking off. And when we see people, we leash them, of course, but he is loving this. The coyotes see Clark, they're barking at him. Just past the junction for a Dooley Knob. You know, that's where everyone else is hiking. But look at this path already. We're already into a foot deep snow with two feet snow drifts. Yeah, Antelope Island in the winter with all the snow is pretty unique. And this is very, pow not powdery, very packable snow, which means a lot of water. A yeah, cross country skier right there. Here, good boy. We don't want you to scare the cross country skier. That'd be fun. <clears throat> Hike up to the top, ski down the slope a little bit. It's the elephant rock in the distance. We hiked that last year around March or April time, time frame. Afterwards, we hiked towards that rock in the lake there. But there's definitely a lot more water in the lake now. You now, deep snow, huh, Clark? Yeah, we're going almost into two feet snow. Whoa. And here's the cave. Yeah, we'll put on our snowshoes soon. Let's get past this little rocky cliff section up here. Glad we brought the shoes. Snowshoes. Alright, got the snowshoes on. the viewpoint right here. You're legless, Clark.
There's the communication tower in the distance, way up there. We might be the first ones up here since the snowstorm. Maybe not, because we did see the skiers and other snowshoers. But they're not on the original path, though. trail where the skiers went. Wow, look at this view. It's a giant ski slope. But there's a lot of snow up here. And someone's booting it. Stepping in the foot every time. not too far away though maybe a mile and a half a mile from the fake summit a mile and a half though from the true summit all right that's the other viewpoint you can see how there's just a lot less snow here because the wind has pushed all that snow from here way down there all right we have a mile long push to the communication tower. that sign down there we're like a hundred feet above the sign and the path we're following this person's footsteps look they're sinking in about a foot to two feet with these post holes that's exhausting all right on this viewpoint we're almost there about a quarter mile away from the communication tower my battery is about to die so now I gotta jump over to my cell phone to record the rest of this trip Not yours. Yeah. Some other, there's been a few people who have pressed onward. Oh look, there's a guy up there. Hey, yeah, that might be the same guy we've been following. There's Furry Peak in the distance. We saw one hiker above us. So we're following his same footsteps. This is where you go down. Up the right side. This gotta be fun though. Sidestepping the entire trip. You have to jump, Clark. Yep, you have to go down. Go down, Clark. Yep, go down. He's thinking about it. Like, that's scary, huh, Clark? Yeah, go down there, Clark. Go down there. Go down, Clark. Yeah, go down. Go, Clark, go. Want me to go first? Okay, I'll go first, Clark. Come on, Clark, come on. 
Claire, come on. Come on, Claire. Whoa. Yeah, come on, Claire. Come on. Come on, you can do it. You did it. Your turn. Come on, Clark. Yes, good boy. And back down, I guess. Come on. Come on. Come on, Clark. All right, this is where we're turning around. These uh, narrow bridge edges are just a little too much for Clark. I don't blame him, just, just a little scary. And that was a difficult one just right there. When we could take him up there, it'd just be a slow process. But then imagine coming all the way back down, you know? So Sarah and I could definitely do it by ourselves, but not with this trip with Clark. Anyways, so we're going to turn back here, follow the ridge line just for a little bit, and it opens back up, and we'll start hiking back down. Up here. All right, coming back down from the communication tower. And going back down is going to be a lot quicker, especially with our snowshoes on. Nice job. Alright, past the cave section, took off our snowshoes, and continuing to hike. Almost there. To the summer trailhead. Another half mile from there to the winter trailhead. All right, we're back at the summer trailhead. And that took us four hours and 50 minutes. And it's about seven miles round trip to the car. So just about another half mile or so to the car and we'll be done. And unfortunately, we weren't able to make it to the summit. I just, that ridge line was pretty, uh, scary for Clark so you know that's twice now within the couple months mm -hmm. we've been skunked from the top there <clears throat> so let's make another trip with Clark when all the snow melts yeah at least the ridge line area and attempt again all right that's it from us on Ferry Peak Trail on Antelope Island in Utah. Say goodbye, Sarah. We did it. We did it. Say goodbye, Clark. Clark, say goodbye. Say goodbye to everyone. Goodbye.